Hey everybody, Brian Von Vier here, back at it again. Today we're going to be talking about simple, sweet, innocent little campaign ideas that you, yes you listening in right now, can use to your advantage. So whip out your notebook and pull up your DM screen because we've got what are your short and simple campaign ideas. The notice on the signpost read, Bandits have been troubling the roads. Prior to that moment, you thought the local officials were oblivious to your misdeeds. A legendary trap maker has left a treasure map to his fortunes as his last will and testament. Unfortunately, the path to that treasure may represent his finest work. There are strange noises coming from the fields at night. I'm sure it's unrelated to the coven of witches we murdered. When the wolves came running down off the mountain, people were terrified of the wolves. Then they realized that the wolves were fleeing something even more terrifying. A freak snowstorm in the summer was the first sign that something was amiss. The second sign was when the snow came alive. Brigands have kidnapped the princess. If they're not careful, she'll murder them all. Many were worried when soldiers returning from the Grey Tower Wars began getting sick and dying. They should have burned the bodies before they rose from the dead. The crazy old wizard warned the duke that if he didn't pay homage to him, that he would cause a great calamity. But the duke laughed him out of court. Now the entire castle has vanished. The neighboring village was destroyed yesterday, leveled flat to bare earth by an unseen force. Just like what happened a year and a day before that to another local village. And a year and a day before that to another village. There are no other villages in your valley, and now you fear that you only have a year and a day to stop the destruction of your own village. Of course, you could just play the story from the Goonies. Roll in sight. An elf has inherited her uncle's enchanted guitar-like instruments. She starts a band that plays elven fusion rock. Think Fairpoint Convention, Pentacle, and some Jefferson Airplane and tours in human cities because elves where she is don't live in large groups and don't use money often, where some superstitious people and an important church hate elves. Rumors abound that a famous holy magical scepter is a newly discovered dungeon. Two rival dwarf kings send parties of dwarves, humans, and elves to retrieve it. The duke and his son died in the war in the south, and now the goblins have cut off all travel and communication with the Central Valley. A baron has seized the duchy and is oppressive and takes no action against the goblins. The player characters are all young nobles in a large duchy. One of them is the duke's daughter, and her stepmother is half-demon. Famine grips the province as, once again, the neighboring community of hobbits has had a population explosion. Crops are overrun with the pests. The people are starving and are on the edge of revolt. The Duke has ordered an extinction campaign against the feral halflings. Well, what side are you on? You enter a town that one of your PCs grew up in and everyone is acting strange and don't remember him. Then you find out they've been converted into a new model warforged made with humanoid skin. You find a town, but it's not located on any map. It appears to be deserted. You spend the night, but then the buildings start to shake and lift from the ground. You've stumbled into a mimic town. Oh God, that's horrifying, I hate it. A merchant is willing to give you a high discount if you sign his petition. But it turns out he is a warlock collecting souls and you've just signed your soul away. But if you burn the contract, you'll get your soul back. The Terrask just rampaged through the campaign world, killed every high-level NPC in it, and disappeared. Your level 1 PCs are all that's left to pick up the pieces, hopefully before some high-level monsters turn up to take over. The city of Adventure is large and cosmopolitan. It also has a fine city guard to keep things safe. What it doesn't have is weird specialists capable of handling the weirdest challenges. When the city library stands up and walks away on giant chicken legs, when mutant animals emerge from the sewers, when zombies start eating chimney sweeps, the city instead calls on the queen's own troubleshooters 
i.e. anyone who would normally fail to get into the elite guard but has useful skills anyway. Mount Nakadov, ancient city of the seven gods, is the center of the known world, a hotbed of intrigue, both secular and ecclesiastical. People and species from all the planes can be found here, each with their own plans, secrets, and plots. Your PCs, clerics, and paladins all are at the heart of this intrigue. Will they lead a schism, halt the rise of demon worship, lead a conclave, and get elected high priest? It's up to them. The king of Aquantia, richest monarch on the continent, just died. One PC is his 14-year-old heir, Louis XVI, first level aristocrat. The rest are his cronies, favorites, and closest advisors, such as confessor, lieutenant of handgunners, favorite bard, etc. Can they survive the deadly, decadent court? Learn to govern the realm and turn it into an empire? Other empires beg to differ. All PCs are a member of the Bardic Guild. They can actually be of any class so long as at least one level is in any bard subclass. They travel the world putting on shows, but their real job is to assist fellow travelers and promote the guild's interests with targeted theft, assassination, seduction, or being there to just help a patron. An unknown race of dwarves have been building a tinker-made army of machine dinosaurs for centuries in their hidden fortresses. They are about to march out of their fastness and conquer a world currently embroiled in a massive series of civil wars. An enterprising thief has tricked his way into wearing the crown of the king of all fairies, not the pleasant kind, but the true monsters, and is waging a secret war against the only people who could stop his kind, bards. But why them, and how can they stop the fey armies? Enough is enough, as civilization is about to overrun the last true wild place, Mother Nature awakens the titans, one at a time, to destroy the world. The PCs are somehow touched by a prophecy saying they could save a kingdom or two, and now everyone wants them, or leverage against them. Turns out your fantasy world was on a planet that was actually a huge monster egg and it hatched. The ensuing apocalypse was bad, sure, but your people have learned to thrive on this new uh, planet. And just as you are getting everything back to normal, heroes from your planet's next meal have created portals here to try and kill the space monster you call home. The lizard people have been considered subhuman, and their lands have been treated as training grounds for heroes and villains for ages. Two Lizardmen leaders have emerged, one who seeks only blood, and one who seeks to make a civilized nation for his people. The currents of magic are fickle. All arcane magic now requires gemstones as material components, and they have a small chance of breaking every time a spell is cast through them. All the major nations now turn their eyes towards the few places where the most powerful gems can be found. A new cult has been spreading, peaceful and giving. They have outposts everywhere and have been a force of great good. The PCs learn that the source of their power is like an aquifer that recharges much more slowly than it is being used, but need a way to prove that. And even then, will anyone listen? Save the dragon, kill the girl. The children of the heroes of the last campaign steal their parents' magical gear and go off themselves. This has the interesting hook of low-level characters with powerful magic items. Run two campaigns where each group is fighting on the opposite side of a conflict. With a really good group, you can have one set of players alternate between sides. The great heroes came to the final conflict with the evil overlord and died. Their ghosts have sought out a new group of heroes and they are encouraging them to succeed where they had failed. The PCs work for a criminal organization. They have been sent into a land threatened by evil in order to play the heroes and use that influence to help their organization. High-level campaign idea, there are a series of floating citadels that protect the world from threats from beyond, but there hasn't been an invasion in decades. The citadels are succumbing to political infighting. Can the heroes unite them before doom falls? The heroes have been defeated, but their minds possess their familiars, animal companions, or henchmen. A disease of unknown origin 
is increasing the blood in humans and inciting the local vampire population. An evil doppelganger spy organization has decided to infiltrate the team to get close to the king. A town of magic is being corrupted from the shadows by a magic-hating group of business owners. The world flooded 45 years ago due to an unexplained rift forming and causing a flood to form the elemental plane of water. No one knows why and much of the world is now unexplored. A god destroyed 72 cities with a glowing mace. Survivors of the cities are born with innate spellcasting of fifth level spells. Power and politics are shifting as people try to scoop these survivors and mold them into magical weapons with stored souls. The air became stagnant and a blood red moon has appeared over the world. It's been two weeks since this happened. Druids claim to know the answer as everything begins to rot, starting with the Star Mantle Tower. A plague had suddenly been washing over the land. Kingdoms are using this event to claim territory and start war. Among the remains of the plagued lands, new elementals and shadowfell touched creatures arise like undead. A painting has been rumored to teleport you into an archwizard's home from another dimension. When the adventurers find the painting and are teleported, they discover additional paintings of themselves in older forms, depicting them dying in a gruesome battle against a many-headed titan with black dragon wings. The painting is named The Preventable. An Eladrin appears before them smirking as ice magic licks from his body, as he claims he has been waiting for them. A wizard school in the shape of a tower has been teleported into the Nine Hells. No sane person would risk getting these people back. However, the current prince and many noble children of high birth were studying there at the time. Your mission is simple, to retrieve as many of them as you can, but only the prince truly matters as the others may slow your escape. It has not stopped snowing for 89 years. People have tried to build around it, but resources are scarce and much of the land has been covered or hidden by the ice. To make matters worse, the sun has not risen once during this time. You find someone with information on how to fix this disaster, but it requires planar travel, crystals retrieved from foreign lands, and the blood of a phoenix to fix this issue. Hey everybody, Brian Von Vier here checking in after the vid. Please make sure to leave a like, subscribe, ring that bell, and of course, if you have a suggestion on a short and simple campaign idea, put it in the comments below. We love you all, please be safe, happy, and healthy, and we will see you next time. Bye for now.